Hola amigos, bien ok. Otro día aquí en Medellín, pero hoy vuelve para hablar un poco más con el tema que con ayer es para expresión de tiempo y cómo utilizar y practicar um, diferentes expresiones con la misma oración. ¿Mm? Um, so, principalmente, así te dice gracias a señora Nissenberg desde Nueva York, este muy buen um, libro que yo utilizo para mejorar mi gramática español. Um, pero es por eso yo tomo esta oración con página número 40. Pero bien, es solo para demostrar un técnico que tú puedes utilizar con cualquier oración, es pues muy útil para mejorar tu inglés. Toma una, una oración y cambia por diferentes formas con la misma um, oración, pero en el tiempo pasado, presente y futuro. Ok? So, thanks again to uh, Gilda Nissenberg for her marvelous book. Complete Spanish grammar, which I am struggling to work through, but um, it's very good, but very detailed. Um, but this is just to show you, as I mentioned yesterday, a quick exercise to help us practice and improve how we express different senses of time, in the sense when we're talking about the past, the present, the future, this kind of thing. Um, Now, obviously, the way the grammar works is a bit different in Spanish to English, but you get the idea. Um, so we take a standard sentence. And this is the one I borrowed from Gittler's book. Um, and we switch it up into as many different forms, past, present, and future, as we can, because it's going to help us see really easy the basic pattern of how we change the words or change the endings to express that sense of time. Yeah? So the original sentence is Yo llegué a la oficina, preparé un café, me senté y llamé a un cliente. Which in English comes out as I arrived at the office, prepared a cup of coffee, sat down and called a client. So this is an expression for something that's happened in the past technical term for this is it's the preterite tense, but basically it's a past tense, something has happened. So different ways we can mix this back up. So I tried this back into the present tense. Um, yo llegó a la oficina, preparó, no, preparo un café, me siento y llamo a un cliente. Yeah. So I arrive at the office, prepare a coffee, sit down and call a client. So this is the present. Now the easy bit in English is you want to switch this into the future. I just put when. When I arrive at the office, I will prepare a coffee, sit down and call a client. That puts me into the future. I can predict it just from those words. So it's a little bit different in English. But you see how we can change it up to show um, we can practice how we present new forms for what is basically the same sentence. Um, so we have some interesting ones here in Spanish, it gets more complicated. Uh, yo había llegado a la oficina, yo había preparado un café, yo me había sentado y yo había llamado a un cliente. And obviously what we infer in here, we're going to say cuando, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So this is a bit more suspenseful. It's rather like um, kind of thing we're getting a suspense novel. We're building up to something's happening and then something else is going to follow it. So I had arrived at the office. I had prepared a coffee. I had sat down and I had called a client. And the inference in this sense is when something else happened. Yeah. 
Um, so it's still in the past, but it's like we're telling a story, we're relating a story of what's happened in the past. So this thing happened first, and then this, and then this. Yeah. And the final example I got with was Yo hubiera llegado a la oficina, yo hubiera preparado un café, me hubiera sentado y hubiera llamado a un cliente. And in this case, we're looking at si el bus no hubiera llegado tarde. So this is, I would have if. So we're talking about something that should have happened in the past, but couldn't because something else happened. So I would have arrived at the office if the bus hadn't arrived late. I would have prepared a coffee, I would have sat down, and I would have called a client if the bus hadn't arrived late. So you can play around with different versions of this, and obviously it depends on your initial um, sentence how much you can stretch this out, but it's a good thing to practice because it helps you get a better idea of the general structure, the general change you make um, when you want to express that type of sense of time, whether we're talking about the past, the future, and obviously the, the present. Because um, I know for, for me recently, I've, I've noticed some of my Spanish gets confused because I'm mixing up some of the, um, some of the past tenses, well, they change quite a bit, so I'm actually expressing something I don't mean to say. It is the past, but not in that sense. And that's where it's getting confusing, and then I'm getting a lot of like, follow-on questions from the people I'm talking to, because they're confused as to, do I mean this or that? So if we can be a little bit clearer, if I can work to improve that, it's gonna make my life a lot easier. That's the same thing in English, really. Um, if we're conscious of how we generally say it, and if we use the same sentence as a model, it's much easier for us to understand it because we know what we mean generally in that sentence. Yeah? So this is why I suggest, um, if not like a, a nice easy short sentence like this, maybe also try with something like your elevator pitch kind of thing you, you say very often when you're introducing yourself to give you a sense of, talk about your personal history, see if you can project that what would happen in the future, this kind of thing, just to change it up so get a good sense of how the structure changes. Um, but yeah, so obviously when we predict the, uh, the future in English is much, much easier. It's literally just a when I, so that's I will, because that's it. I mean, I will prepare a coffee. So maybe try some of that um, with one of the sentences you use fairly often. See if that helps out with you. Again, déjeme saber in los comentarios. Um, let me know in the comments. Um, I hope you find this one helpful. Um, I'm off now to practice a little bit more um, this type of Spanish with the Gilder's book. Um, it's not to say we have to just spend all day doing the grammar, but there are points where you recognize there's a, um, this is not communicating properly as well as I'd like. So it's good to be able to have a reference you can go back to do a few of these type of exercises and um, sharpen it up a little bit. So buena suerte, good luck, and we'll see you next time. Cheerio for now.